Good day, everyone. It is a always a pleasure, always a pleasure to sit down with you and talk about health and you know what we what we got to do to win the game here and to get your body healthy and stay well. So it's a pleasure. I'm kind of on a run here. I'm in on it's Sunday at three o'clock. I had my granddaughter down. I haven't seen her in years, and uh, so I couldn't record yesterday. But uh, it was good to see my granddaughter, one of them. She just got married, and uh, looks like she's getting ready to have one. So life goes on, and I hope you're all doing well. You know, I hear a lot of great stories out there, and I love it. And we just keep going, no matter what adversity you come against, keep on going. You know, knock it out. You know what you're doing, know why you're doing it, and then uh, go for it. You know, there's, it's not always easy. It definitely is uh, digging into your emotional worlds and your mental worlds and uh, shaking the bush. But when the final analysis is done, you will be in well, Bill, and quite pleased that you are. Uh, just all that that means, spiritually, uh, health-wise, uh, happiness, uh, all those things. You know, just because things have been so highly suppressed here doesn't mean they always will be suppressed. You don't keep that forever. Cycles always come around. And, of course, the unconscious doesn't think about that. So it's, it's swinging around. Look at all you guys. You're helping to swing the consciousness around and uplift it a little bit. You know, sometimes you, you, things still have to go up. You know, if you notice... Things always get better. Seems like they don't sometimes, but in the final analysis, again, they do, you know. Like I say, we're the only one that labels good or bad the experiences that you have. We, depending whether we like or don't like what we're experiencing, we tend to label what we experience. If you step away from that part of the mind, the, the causal mind, then there is no labels. It just is. It just happens. Whatever it is, it just happens. There's no bad or good to it. It all happens for the good of the whole. And it all happens for the improvement of the individual as well and for the whole of creation as well. So sometimes it takes some deep, dark roads. There's no question about that. But um, I, it's just hard to tell. Hard to tell what... Uh, you know, with all you guys, it uh, could make a big difference. could change the course of things. Who knows? I don't know. But I want to get as many of these done because I, uh, I failed to uh, keep up with you guys. I've just got so many things going and the class is in a week. And I just, I thought I could come and knock this out this whole week. But I've had one thing after another, meeting after meeting and this and that. So I apologize to you. But like I've always said, if you're hurting... Or there's some real serious problems here. You call into the clinic. Never be afraid to do that. All right. Now, this one, category manager. I don't know. Let me see. Hello. Uh, oh, A-D-R-I-K-A. -A. Uh, hello. I got your link from my friend. Your herb products really helped me, and he suggests to me to try it to. I have already one year problem with my stomach. I try everything. Also, two months ago, doctors find it I have underactive thyroid with too much hormones. Interesting. Underactive thyroid with too much hormones. Well, that would mean that uh, your pituitary, your TSH is high. Uh, but, but. Uh, that's easy to remedy. I'm uh, taking already one month, one natural product with organic iodine, but my side effects still very bad. Special heart beating and too much pressure to my head. Yeah, I don't like any of that. Well, the thing is, you don't want isolated iodine. I don't care if it's from kelp or where it's from. It's still an isolate. And any isolated chemistry will unbalance body chemistry. It has the potential, obviously, to become a free radical, as which is what iodine does as an isolate. 
and uh, nothing ever good. A lot of hyperthyroids came out of iodine usage. Uh, the pressure in your head, I don't like that either. Uh, that's your lymph system, of course, and uh, that's uh, nothing good. Now, the heart beating. What's interesting here, um, if, you're, if your uh, thyroid is low, it's possible that your parathyroid is low. Um, I, I just, just look at your case, but that's easy to fix. If, you're, if your hormones or steroids are, are too high, then detoxification balances those out. If, in fact, uh, they're too high from a weakness in another tissue, then, of course, you fix the weakness in the other tissue. So you could, you could surmise that, uh, that the pituitary is trying to get the thyroid to work better by increasing TSH. You could also have a hyperpituitary gland, too, creating too much TSH. I mean, there's several things you could look at in looking at that. Irregardless, you know, you want to take a glandular um, for the thyroid if you want, uh, say a 150 for one or two bottles. Um, the thing with the heartbeat beating, though, that's, um, I'd have to know more about this. If you have tachycardia, you wouldn't want to touch your thyroid gland because that tachycardia is a fast heart rate. And you wouldn't want to touch the thyroid. You just want to detoxify and that will pull all this inflammation out and everything will go back to normal. Uh, hyperactivity is always the easiest to fix. Hypo or chronic hypoactivity is, uh, you know, that's where people are going. Uh, to my head, also sensitive for light and noise. It's very uncomfortable and, think, and thinking start with pills from doctor. Well, You're just really, I mean, your nervous system sounds like it's really irritated from acidosis. You know, uh, acids hypersensitizes, hyperstimulates things, uh, but eventually, of course, destroys it. So, uh, for the sake of hyperactivity, then you go into hypoactivity, and then you go into tissue death. So... Uh, detoxification would be the key here and I would need to see more about your blood work and stuff you know about the thyroid and stuff but stomach you might want to take the heal all tea stomach and bowel number whatever it is you need if you move every day you poop every day number one will be fine and start or just get you some slippery elm marshmallow stay away from proteins you know that's not going to make your stomach feel real good to initiate hydrochloric acid when it's already inflamed uh, so, I uh, definitely want to um, uh, deal with that. Uh, would like to start to work, but it's very hard for me. I'm really desperate, and I will appreciate any help and advice from you. Uh, is this, I mean, is your stomach so bad you can't work? Um, you know, that would also suggest malabsorption and other factors, too. When someone has stomach problems, you can just about assume interstitially that's in around the cells of wherever. So if we're talking about the stomach, in the wall of the stomach around the cells, of course, is interstitial fluid. And that is part of the lymphatic system and part of how the body eliminates waste from cells. You've got to have some system in the body to get rid of waste from cells. Remember, we were talking about the new lymphatic system that they just discovered in the brain, an aggressive lymphatic system. So there could be so much about the human body we don't even know yet that it's not even funny. And I, I mean, that's an obvious, but more in nano levels. But still, I mean, when you're finding a whole new system in the human body, in the 21st century that has never been discovered before. That's pretty interesting. I mean, that does bring up a lot of... So it can kind of maybe can tie you into the fact that these guys just don't have all the answers. They don't have any of them, hardly. Like the machines, though. I would like to start to... Uh, let me see here. I would have... Okay. I'd uh, be happy to help you with that. Uh, thyroid, I'd have more information on the thyroid, uh, maybe a copy of your blood work or something like that. If someone wants to send me in a copy of blood work and wants me to go over over the uh, YouTube with you, I'll be happy to, to teach you guys how to, to, to interpret blood work. At least that's what we want to look out of it. Uh, other stuff's uh, easy, most of it's easy to fix. 
Uh, the heart beating, though, I don't know quite what's going on there. Unless you have a parathyroid weakness, you're low in calcium. So you would want to correlate. And if you get someone that asks questions like this for you, Facebook, you want to get more information, have them fill out the questionnaire, take a look at their blood work, and TSH is T4s, T3s. I mean, that's a little stretchy for some of you, but uh, in level two, we're going to be talking about these and how to interpret them and how to, how to, to use them to a, some, some degree. We're not trying to be medical doctors. We are tissue regenerators. We are health people. We, we, we don't uh, chase rainbows and um, things like that. Ooh, subject, my son and his epilepsy. Wow, this is from Cliff. Dr. Morris, we have some results and confirmation on our son and his epilepsy and seizures. Oh, man. Oh, wow. All right, Cliff. Hayden has what is called focal uh, cortical uh, dysplasia of the front temporal lobe. I think I read this one before, didn't I, Cliff? Or, uh, this has been explained to us as a defective growth uh, issue as he develops into adulthood. It is a lack of growth in the frontal temporal lobe regions. The neurologist... Neuro, neuro what? Pooey! The neurosurgeons say the only cure is surgery if their AED, anti-epileptic drugs, are not effective. Can you please tell us if you are able to help us with this diagnosis? Now, I have, Cliff, I think I've already read this and done this, but just, uh, just in case I have it. When you see irregular growths, ganglias, and things like this, there's only one way to go in and correct uh, obstructions or uh, glands that are underproducing growth hormones or whatever it is, whatever you're looking at genetically, your only chance to rebuild and to straighten all that out is your body, nature, and God. That's it. Not medical doctors. No, 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 no. Not nature pass. Nature and God. And you have to understand that we have the tools on this planet, at least for now, we have the tools to help someone like this and to help anyone that has genetic mutations or weaknesses. So the order, first order of the day would be to stop feeding anyone like this anything acidic. Anyone that has epilepsy or seizures, the first thing you want to do is stop all protein. The very first thing you have to do is stop all protein. The second thing, of course, falls right in line with that is all dairy products. You're going to stop all that crap. Since it's neurologically, we're speaking, the fruits and the berries hold the highest magnetics and chemistry for those tissues. They are the ones. So you want to get your boy exclusively on fruits, berries, and melons. Nothing else. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess around with nothing else. I don't know how old he is here, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't mess around with anything else. Because in those factors, you're going to see neurological realignment and growth. I, it's just amazing to see that. At the same time, there's so many great herbs for the neurological systems. So you want to, you want, definitely want to get the brain and nerve number two in upper circulation. This will aggressively move blood up in the air, at the head area, which is oxygen and goodies. And then also you've got brain regenerative herbs in this, in the brain and nerve number two. At the same time, you want to fix this boy. You want to go down and you want to get the kidneys fixed. You want to make sure his urine is filtering, get his adrenals up. You want to get into this boy because you want to see if this is not if that's the only reason he's having seizures or epilepsy. Um, in that way, you're going to regenerate this young man. And it's the only way. It's the only hope you have. And going in the head with surgeries in an undeveloped area sounds uh, way out there to me because uh, some of these surgeons, we're seeing what they're, they're, what, where their minds are, and it's, it's, it's scary. So I don't know what to tell you about that. Uh, I would definitely want to do everything I could nature's way to regenerate itself. Uh, before I would do anything like surgeries because, boy, you're just flipping a coin in the fountain and hoping it'll land head up. I mean, it's just, you got to be real careful. Um, we are about to agree to surgery for him, but want to be certain that we have covered all our bases with this. Boy, I would not. I'd really head off on the diet and everything else first. I really would. This is the kind of case that needs to call in here. 
Cliff, you need to call in here and talk to me or talk to Jen and get this set up and get him going because I'll get my son like yesterday on this and get him straightened around here. A little coconut uh, water or milk wouldn't uh, hurt either. It'd be, it's an anti-seizure anyway. Anything base is going to be anti-epileptic, anti-seizure, uh, coconut real good, any lipid, uh, rich lipid foods. But again, your fruits and your berries, those are the two top magnetically rich, uh, chemically rich foods. Ripe, of course. Um, are we wasting our time with trying a diet, herbal regimen? No, not at all. Mm -mm. We have been, I mean, not at all. But you've got to take some time to regenerate this. You've got to understand that. And if we can get this, uh, stop his uh, epilepsy here. Uh, we've got a, uh, of course, an antispasmodic that I highly recommend that you use with this, always. Uh, in any type of seizures or epilepsy or, you know, tremors or anything like that. Uh, so I would always use that to control these things. Because in the pharmaceutical world, um, you know, you can get really dependent on these to where they're almost addicting. Almost like cinnamon in, um, for uh, Parkinson's. And then uh, you just have to be careful uh, with these, uh, where herbs are not. We have been trying to understand and control these life-threatening seizures since our son was ten and a half. Well, he's old enough to go all on fruit. That, that gives me some idea. So he started seizures at ten and a half, and now it looks like we have some hope, but it is still surgery. Not really. I would really turn him around the other way, you know, and, and do this the right way because that's regeneration. They're just going to remove. But this is when surgeons don't go in and add. They go in and remove. I mean, they might add a plate or some bone or something in some places, but this is probably going to be removal. And I don't, you know, I, I think you could end up with some more, not more serious problems. Uh, we all put our hearts into a hopeful cure or, or medication only to be completely broken hearted. Well, you, you can't regenerate with chemicals. I think man needs to wake up to this. I mean, it is not even sooner or later. I mean, remember, remember Consumer Reports. Just on Consumer Reports in hospitals, 440,000 deaths uh, from mistakes and stuff. Now, you could double that because I'm very aware in hospitals how things are hidden. So you could double that easy. What you have when the facts are shown to the public is a shock of gigantic proportions. A shock. We have a runaway system. The AMA, but it's not just the AMA, it's the whole medical consciousness worldwide. We have a runaway system that thinks it, it's the cat's meow, and it uses toxic chemicals that have a tremendous amount of fatal events. Millions die. It is safe to say millions die each year from pharmaceuticals, and maybe I, I haven't heard of any deaths from herbs in years, and the same with, and the same with uh, pharma, uh, homo. Uh, Ah, homeopathics. So I have to say that something's wrong with this picture. Millions? None. So what are you doing, FDA? You need to be raided and put to jail. That's what needs to happen. The FDA needs to be raided and all those guys go to jail. And the big bulldogs go to jail right off for intimidating people and, and, acting the, and raiding people. You know, these, I thought it was interesting that on the, uh, I get this mother, which is really, uh, it's a magazine really involved in all kinds of levels of truth, you know. It said, does our police department really need uh, grenade launchers? You know, our police department is so out of balance and so used to policing people. They've got people so mad now, some of them are in fear for their lives. And it's like, you can't suppress people's lives. And then expect to be happy out of it and, and, and someone not come after you. So I was just thinking about that this morning, how the FDA so brazenly tells people we're going to violate your First Amendment rights. And, that, and it's that you're not going to get away with it much longer, I'm telling you. And things are going to, things are going to change, guys. This is, uh, this, is, this is a form of war going on. So, don't put your faith in pharmaceuticals because that would be a huge mistake, Cliff. You, there is total regeneration of tissue. You cut yourself, you heal. 
how well you heal, how slow you heal, how much pain was involved tells you one thing, how acidic you were or were not. It's that simple. We've talked about Arnold Eretz, and, and, and I also did the experiment with the, with the cutting of the skin under various pH factors. And it's amazing. I mean, when you realize a high alkaline body does not feel pain like an acid body. A high alkaline body, you can cut yourself and you don't even feel it. That's amazing. I mean, what else is out there that we can achieve? How high can we get in the world of health and vitality? Wild, although that's not my number one focus in the sense God is, but still, that's my number two focus. Now, let's see this one. I would really like that Dr. Morse talks Morse about the more about the subject to regenerate tissue. <laughs> you know what's funny? It's like we were talking about it. Some of the things when we train you guys to speak in the public's eye and, and deal with the public. A lot of people have fear with public speaking. Matter of fact, it was once said, public speaking, the fear of public speaking ranks above the fear of death. <laughs> So, it is trying, let me tell you. I used to write out my talks, and, and I'd be like this, and I realized, you know, that makes it worse. Speak from your heart always when you talk to someone. Speak truth. Everybody recognizes truth at one level or another, somewhere with inside themselves. So, speak it. Always speak simple, always speak the truth. Who cares what people think? But that is key. Uh, so, we are creating a good movement of truth and honesty and integrity and helping people get their lives well, giving them remedies where they had no remedies before. It's important to understand that the body is a regenerator as well. We have duality. and we, we can, From one level, we'll talk from this level. We have duality at one level. And so where you have degeneration, you have regeneration. You know the reason why man lost his faith in regeneration? Because no one knows the truth about health much. You've got the natural health field all scattered like scared chickens. And you've got the AMA and you've got the, the FDA and all these, uh, these criminals uh, allowed to get away with this. We haven't had one president that's gelling these people for the uh, effects of what they've done on people. And you would think Obama, and here's Michelle, into health, right? Wrong. I mean, you know, this is just, they're still raiding us. So you, it's, just, it's just really bad. But nothing ever stays. Things flip. And those that were raiding are now going to jail. And it's just going to happen that way for the planetary things. Not that I really care. And we shouldn't care. Because it isn't our world. We're only here as visitors. Remember, we're spiritual beings have a physical experience, but we're also here as channels. We can also stand up and speak our mind and stop things that are not right. And that's what's not been done. The FDA has never been stopped, and they need to be stopped because they are far from a consumer protection agency. And you have to understand that whistleblowers for years have come out and, 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 and spoken about this, whistleblowers, and they've gotten in a lot of trouble for doing it. But thank God there's those good spiritual people that are willing to stand up and tell the truth. We need that to happen with the IRS. And you guys in America will be shocked to learn the truth. You will be shocked to know what really the IRS has been up to and what they've been getting away with. And it will make you mad. Now, is it even possible to regenerate cartilage in the knees? Because that sells too. Absolutely. Peace and love to you too, bro. Absolutely. But what's, what's the one organ, I'll say, in the body that is most responsible for the loss of knees and hips. Oh, you're right. Kidneys. Always. Why? They're up here. Knees are down there. Why? The lymph system. Acids. The production of acids or the creation of acids by every cell in your body is obvious. All manufacturers of every level, whether it's out in our society or in your body, always creates chemical residues that must be eliminated. It's that simple. How are you eliminating your acid waste 
from a hundred trillion cells, and then some acid waste from parasitic waste. Of course, that's dumped into the lymph system as well, of course. But how do you get rid of it? Well, medical doctors think you dump all your sewage into your blood. Does that make sense? Do you go poop in your kitchen sink and then mix it with your food? I don't think so. Uh, and and, and I'm in, I've been in the building trades for years, and the one thing that we always do in the building trades is try to separate water from sewage. Drinkable, potable water from sewage. That's, a, that's a thought obvious. And yet they can't get it. I was reading the paper on the new uh, lymphatic system, and they understood that it was important to remove waste, cellular metabolic waste from the brain. Well, it's true everywhere, even the fingers. But they didn't quite know how. Hmm. Wow. Shocking. Scary. The scary thing about all that is people put their lives in these people's hands. That's what's scary. Now, this is from John. Hi, I'm a I'm a 15-year-old male. Well, I'm glad to meet you, John. A 15-year-old male writing to me. Love you, man. Good, good young man. And I've been dealing with severe acne. Look at how many of you guys are dealing with severe acne. Cystic acne and all this for two years. I recently went on a mostly fruit and vegetable diet with a little meat sometimes. And tips to uh, getting clear skin. You know, any tips to getting clear skin. It would be great if you could explain everything I have to do and be detailed. Oh, come on. Uh, I, I, if I do this to every question, I'd, I'd only get two or three answered. But I will do this. Your skin, as you've probably been reading in some of, or watching in some of these videos, is your uh, largest eliminative organ. If you look at it, your skin is like a sponge. It will absorb stuff, too. That's the problem. You put something on your skin, make sure you can eat it. Because if you put something on your skin and you can't eat it, it's probably going to hurt you. Because it's going to absorb in, then it gets into the lymph, then some into the blood, and blah, 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 blah. So, bottom line to skin, so extreme skin problems, guys, is cellular waste, sewage. When you don't see your sewage coming out your urine, where's it going? Well, your skin is your third kidney, so what do you think that red and on the skin looks like? That's acids. Which side of chemistry would cause that? And that's acids. Well, where are these acids coming from on your skin? They're not. It's coming from inside of you, out of your skin. Matter of fact, if you don't sweat, you could be just holding subcutaneously, which is right under that top layer, all that sewage. And it's blow back. It's burning you back. And the only way you can get remedy, young man, is get your kidneys filtering. And I would, since you're a young man, learn a lot about this. Remember, we show you these charts about kidney filtration? That's key. And at 15 years old today, there's no way you're going to be born without kidney and adrenal weaknesses. That's standard issue to this planet. So, these are some of the things you've got to fix. So go after your kidneys and adrenals. We have a 14-week protocol. If you're, you or your parents can afford it, I would do it. If not, go on the Fab Four or go on an abbreviated part of this. At least try to do the first kit. That'll get everything going. But minimally, I would do two kidneys. I would do some, an adrenal gland formula. Depends what your blood pressure is doing, even at 15. Uh, and I would do so, a lymphatic formula at least. You could do a skin formula. That's okay. You can do that as well. Now, when you start detoxifying, do not get upset if your skin looks worse temporarily. You're shaking the bushes, baby. You're opening the doors. So what's in wants to come out. It's like horses wanting to get out of the stable. Open the door and let them out. And that's what detoxification is, is opening the door and letting out the acids. Well, you can have symptoms doing it. Now, diet-wise... You're doing pretty good. I'd shuck the meat. No dairy products. You want skin, bad skin? Eat dairy products. Drink all kinds of milk. Won't take long. 
you know. So you got to cut all dairy products. That is the the number one uh, acne, psoriasis, uh, sinus, uh, tumor formation is dairy products. Get away from all proteins. And you stay with your fruits and your berries and your melons at about 80% and maybe 20% salads or veggies. And take off after, detoxify yourself. And you're going to have to regenerate yourself a little bit too. At 15 years old, no one comes here with a healthy body at 15 years old on 21st century on planet Earth in the physical universe. Doesn't happen. So, uh, go after it that way, young man. And uh, if you want a more detailed layout, then... Uh, uh, call GNB and, and uh, see what we can do for you in that way. But you want to at least get two kidney formulas, a lymphatic formula, and I do kidney number one, lymph uh, kidney number two, lymphatic number one, minimally an, an endocrine gland or adrenal formula, and then add a skin to that. And at the same time, stay up high fruit and berries and melons. And you'll clear that skin up, my friend. But you got to fix at 15. I'm glad you're asking this because at 15, if this guy gets his kidneys filtering and fixed up at 15, he'll have a great life. Depends his genetic pull and all that. But still, you're at, at 15. He's starting to think about regeneration. I love that. At 15 years old, that's really good. So I'm really proud of you, man. Really proud of you. And this is Vicky, v Vicky Vigan. Dr. Morris, thank you for your channel. You're welcome, Vicky. Uh, you are changing the world one person at a time. We, we are changing the world one person at a time. It works better when it's a group of us, and you guys are a mighty fine group to work with. So I'm proud to work with you guys. Recently, I've come across your channel and feel truly blessed. Oh, thanks, sweetheart. I've watched your videos on the Great Lymphatic System and all of your information on ex it was extremely helpful. I would appreciate if you could give uh, me some advice or guidance for the situation I'm in right now. All right. Let's see where she is. My past history has always has been always that of a weak immune system since birth. Okay, so now let's stop a minute and think about this. When someone says, I have a weak immune system, what system are we talking about? Let's see. We've got 100 trillion cells or something around that, of course. And... Most of those cells are in the shape of organs and glands and structures. Then we've got two fluids. Now we do have a bunch of immune cells. But where are they? Where are those immune cells? Where is our immune system? It is our lymphatic system. That is our main immune system. We have immunity in the blood, but most of the immunity is in the lymph system. Why? Because that's where everybody... Er, er, Blood dumps what it doesn't want into the sewer system, just, just as you would think it would. Oh, I don't want this. So your sewer system is a system of bacterium, virals. I mean, you might have some in the blood, but you know, imagine how much more you have in the lymph system. I mean, it's just unbelievable. But this lymph system is, one, you're immune, two, you're sewer, three, you're a lipid carrier system, and hell, who knows what else. <laughs> that's the that's the thing. This is a prize system that dairy products have ravished. It's just I, I can't believe we went to dairy products. You know, I, I understand in poor countries where we have you know goats or cows and we have to, but I tell you, even then we make ourselves sick. The only reason people are dying from Ebola is either from the treatment of it or their lymph system is a holy mess. So. When you're talking about your sewers, your your um, your immune system, sweetheart, you're talking about your lymphatic system, and you're right. Most people with lymphatic, most people have lymphatic problems majorly. I I rarely see people that don't have lymphatic problems. I, I'm not not sure that I've even seen one. Oh, I, okay. Also, at the age of 18, I've been. You're 18. Holy moly. Well, it's a, I'm proud to have a lot of you young young folks on board here, and, and real proud of you for lifting your head up and going, hey, I need even looking and researching for help. That shows your spirituality at 18 and 15. So, you know, it's well known amongst the masters and stuff that, that you know, higher souls are coming in here now, and a lot of them. So it ought to be quite interesting what's going to happen. I, I, 
right. Uh, with third stage, holy crap. Wait a minute. Also, at, at age of 18, I've been diagnosed with third stage Hodgkin's lymphoma and went through five, five and a half cycles of ABVD chemo. 18 years old, I gave him chemo. I had a port through which the chemo was administered. On my last month of scheduled chemo, I was put into a hospital for two weeks with meningitis. Jesus friggin' Christ. Sorry, God. <sighs> Couldn't have been the chemo. You know, that's serious crap, brother. This chemo is serious, serious crap. And for, you know, at 18, she should have had the right to, def to refuse chemo. And for parents, forced her shame on that. Because with meningitis, I mean, this is, I mean, just remember, they're, they're giving you Drano. That's a nurse's a session. Whenever you go anywhere, nurses call chemo Drano. Well, if I gave anybody Drano, I'm sure I would have a detective here and I'd be under arrest. But it's okay for a medical doctor to give someone Drano because it has some magic to it. I hear these asshole medical doctors tell me they have a 65%, 85% cure rate with chemo. I want to just coke them and then, and then do a meditation and get myself in balance because it's just, it, just, it just takes me off my center. It's just unbelievable that these guys would even think, to even think that you would give someone a, a substance of such an acid nature of Drano and that people would actually get healthy from doing it. These guys are a killing machine like no other and, and, and getting away with it like nobody's been, at least at one level. On my last month of scheduled chemo, I was put, okay, let me see, uh, I pretty much felt like I was dying. Well, they pretty much were trying to kill you. I mean, there's no other way to put it. When you give someone that level of acid, you're trying to kill them. If you might think to yourself, trying to think to yourself, though, you know what, I'm trying, I, I'm, I'm, I'm giving them their only hope. That's a crock of crap. That's their narcissism that's talking like that. I pretty much felt, uh, let's see, however, after I was somewhat conscious, My doctor told me that I would not have to finish my chemo round. <laughs> no kidding. It's been four years since then, and I've been, God bless, cancer-free, feeling good. Here's the problem, sweetheart. You know, that was a minor thing. It might have been stage three, but when chemo can knock out a few cells and they consider that cancer-free, they're insane. What you've done is added this, this acid juice in your body, and the chances of a lot of it still there is 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 highly likely and you have done nothing to fix why you had the lymphoma in the first place and lymphoma is of the lymph system so you haven't fixed your kidney filtration you haven't fixed your lymph system sweetheart not to give any negative information but what you want to do right now is turn around and you get this before you start popping cells all over the place because that's the next thing you know you start popping cells that they've damaged with the chemo they start popping a few years down the road no, you get on this program, get yourself healthy, sweetheart, and go, this time, go the route you're supposed to fix this lymphatic system of yours. Because you were right. You were right on. You've had trouble since birth with this. You know, when you have a lymphoma at 18 years old, you're born with kidney and adrenal weaknesses, but probably chronic. So this has got to be fixed. The same way with the 15-year-old we just talked about. So, uh, so, uh, you know, some acne. I mean, we have to get the young people cleaned up and, 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 and educated and, and get this killing machine under control. This is sickening. I know that chemotherapy is toxic and has done a lot of changes, damage to my body after I've recovered. I continue to eat a standard American diet with a lot of meat, dairy. Stop it. I've never been overweight, but my health wasn't at its best. After I've recovered, I went on a health kick. Yeah. And started fitness training uh, for competitions and lost 15 pounds and was technically underweight and starved myself for a year. I destroyed my digestion and kidneys and eating over 100 grams of pro... Oh, honey. Holy crap. Are you trying to kill yourself, honey? Here you come out of lymphoma and chemotherapy and you go on a high-protein diet. Oh, you might, I mean, you're walking right up to the acid door and wasn't wanting to slap you or something. Holy crap. 
but you didn't know any better is what the bottom line to that is. No one knows any better because we trust people and we believe people. Our, our government couldn't lie to us. Our president couldn't lie to us. The FDA couldn't lie to us. <laughs> it was funny. They was interviewing, Fox News was interviewing this guy and I think it was on the something the government and he says, well, you, you kind of trust your government, but sometimes it's a little hard. <laughs> I've been sleeping under a mattress for a while. Now, I've been on a mostly raw vegan diet. Thank God, sweetheart, and fruits. Good. This is the best news I hear in your letter here. And occasionally cooked starches. I feel that my digestion has improved. I'm at a healthy weight right now, and I'm playing the consequences of chemo, paying the consequences of chemo and starvation four years later. Well, remember this. It's all fixable. You're starting right now. Forget the past. You're aware now. You can help tell others. Stop the insanity. You go back and fix this. So you got to get your kidneys filtering. Fix your kidneys and adrenal glands, honey. Those are the two that's going to haunt you all your life. Fix those two. Get your lymph system filtering and clean out all the acids out of your body and any chemo that's being stored in the lymph system because it's just sitting there chewing, chewing, chewing when you're not aware of it. So you want to get all this out, and that in that process, you'll rebuild and strengthen the cells in your body up and beyond your genetic past. So you're a good woman, and this is a, you keep going, uh, Vicki. I love it. I love how you spell your name, too. My problem is this. Even on a vegan diet, my lymphatic system is still congested, and I could tell by my skin. Kidneys, uh, I have really bad cystic acne. Here's another one. Here's another one. It's just, it's just like, well, go to a dermatologist. Uh, forgive me, medical doctors, but you ask for it. On my face, neck, and shoulders, I get sick very easily, nose, throat problems, and I don't know what to do. Detox. Because the only way you got to clean all this mucus out of your throat, out of your sinuses, out of your head, out of your liver, out of your heart, out of everywhere, and the chemo that's stored with it. You want to move your lymph system, and you know your kidneys aren't filtering to have a lymphoma. And you're only 18 and you're not filtering. So you really want to look at the filtration of your kidneys. Remember, get a jar, sweetheart, and pee in it. Make sure there's sediment in it. you got to do that. That's key. Because if you can't filter that lymph system and get acids out of the body, I don't know how you get well. I don't see anybody getting well doing not doing that. I drink about three liters of water a day. I would be careful about that. I mean, because the more acidic you get, you run the risk of getting highly edemic and swelling and then shortness of breath, cardio stuff, different type of cardio stuff this time, sweetheart. This is called congestive heart failure. It's not about how much water you drink. It's about your filtration because it isn't water that's at issue here. I get my heart rate up and sweat, yet not as much as I see other people uh, drip in sweat. Well, it could be you have a low thyroid. So you just want to check all your body, check your stats. You're young. Uh, it's a good time for you to learn about your body and how you take care of it and how you rebuild it and get it uh, back in shape again because you're too young to have gone through this hell. That's a, This is sad stuff. But be glad to help you get your lymph system done. Uh, what can I do to regenerate my lymph system considering the fact that I have about eight lymph nodes were removed? Uh-oh. Okay, so she's had eight lymph nodes removed from my right side of neck. Well, all I can say, sweetheart, is you get on this and you get on this now. And you stay 100% raw and let your body rebuild new lymph nodes because let me tell you, this is serious stuff. When they take lymph nodes out of the neck of an 18-year-old, that's serious stuff. Now, where's all those cells? That's a lot of lymph nodes in the neck. So there's a lot of cells around here that can't drain well. So uh, God hope you don't have any lymphedema from that. Because if you... That the, 18 years old and they're removing all these lymph nodes. All I can say is get raw, sweetie. Get your kidneys filtering. Get your lymph moving. And keep a watch on your neck that you don't see it swelling with lymphedema. And there's nothing they can do about that. Nothing. They created that. So just be real careful, honey. Get raw and start rebuilding. Start rebuilding the body. Get your kidneys filtering and everything else and you'll be in good shape.
You'll be in good shape. Sounds like you're strong enough to make it through all that. They didn't kill you, which uh, they do a lot of kids. So uh, all I can say is go after it the right way, sweetheart, and you'll win. You'll get on top again. You'll rebuild those cells that have been damaged. And uh, hopefully you can rebuild some lymph nodes. So head off at that. But Vicki, I love the fact that you're focusing in on health at your age. You want to do this. you got a whole life ahead of you, honey. And same with you. It's a 15-year-old. Uh, hi there. This is uh, E-L-I-N. Elin. What are your recommendations on how to protect yourself from the sun? Well, that's a good question. Uh, my boyfriend uh, works outside in his singlet in his singlet, several hours every day, and we live in Australia. Yeah, that's the first time I heard that word. He refuses to wear sunscreen, saying the sun is good, and all sunscreens has metals and are worse. But I can't stop thinking and worrying about skin cancer. He loves Dr. Morris, so I think he will really listen to your recommendations. Uh, good day to you, uh, uh, Australian Aussies. Well... He's right. The sunscreen is toxic stuff. There are natural sunscreens, though. We sell them here. So there are natural sunscreens you can get. Uh, I think the real key here, guys, is get your body base balanced. Or what you might say, alkaline. Now, again, some people have the thought that we need to be alkaline. We need to do everything and high alkalinity, 10 pH water. These, please don't fall into that because you'll end up in the emergency room from, from just what's going on. These guys aren't careful. Someday they could get sued. You can't give people 9 and 10 pH water and affect their blood pH that radically and not cause problems. That is a big way to create alkalosis, and that would be, that'd be, can be a serious. So uh, balance, base balance is a pH not above 8, if you look at that. Uh, I think in the AMA, they consider uh, alkalosis as starting at 7.6. So you can see that if you're drinking 10 pH water or 9 pH water, you soon get yourself a deep doo-doo. So you don't want to do that. It's like drinking all these liters of water. If you're going to do that, and, and, as a, as a, and you're working out, and you want to drink all this water, let me suggest you make it fresh-squeezed uh, apple juice, fresh-squeezed grape juice instead. Do something with the chemistry you're ingesting, and make it some chemistry that can help you. Instead of just drinking water, make it, make it have an action to it, so it can go in and, and, and affect that which you want to get well. That's why would you eat other than to keep yourself well? See, this idea of eating for flavor is good. You know, that sensory organ is, is nice when, uh, when you don't have it and you lose your sense of taste uh, and smell. And when you get it back, you realize how important they were to your happiness. Because when all your senses are, are at the peak, you've got a big smile on your face. But when you start losing your senses, you start losing your sense. So it's just enough to say that you all want to go after those kidneys, get them filtering, get your adrenals up, get your lymphatic system, spend some time on the GI tract, get the GI broom, start cleaning up your bowels. Just go for it. Make your, make your body, your physical body, your next fun thing to do. It's not you. It's not something you're using. It's your car. Separate yourself from your bodies. Because you're going to have to one day, sometime or other. And this is a shortcut to God realization. So the first thing you do is you, you stop identifying with these bodies as being you. And things you're using. So fix them up and clean them. Just like any rebuilding of anything. Uh, let me see. This is mom. Two men. Oh, let's just see here. I would like to see a video done for uh, patients that are trying to detox, uh, but are on hydrocortisone for adrenal insufficiency and how to safely wean off and still support the adrenals and kidneys. All right. So let's just stop there before I read on. This is when a glandular is very valuable. It depends on the length of time that you've been on hydrocortisone or any other type of steroid or steroid precursor. 
the length of time you're on something like that, like say over two or three years, then titration, meaning you're going to go off slowly, is in order. What's interesting is you must realize that you're bringing into this body living vibrational foods, fruits, uh, uh, berries, melons, high chemistry, high magnetics. You're bringing in herbs that are specific. You bring, could be bringing in glandulars that elevate the functionability of cells of the endos. So you're not just coming off of it. You're bringing tons of help with you. You're bringing the universe into your body to help. You're bringing all the good guys into you to help you. So you don't have to get overly worried about something like that. But what you got to do is support the adrenal glands for which you're, which is where the problem is and the kidney filtration. So you want to get, use herbs for the kidneys. I like if you've been, been using a steroid or a steroid precursor or any type of steroid type pharmaceutical is to use a glandular for that gland. So I would use uh, 400 milligrams of, uh, of adrenal, pure adrenal. And I would, which is the cortex and the medulla together, I would do both of those. I would do that and at the same time go every other day. This is what I would be doing. I would go every other day or every three days and I'd be going as fast as I could to get off of that. At the same time, remember, all your raw is anti-inflammatory, at least fruits, berries, melons, and vegetables. These are all anti-inflammatory themselves. So everything you're doing, rest anti-inflammatory. Happiness, anti-inflammatory. See what I'm saying? Everything you're doing to get well is focused on a base balance. And in that process then, inflammation, which is acidosis, is neutralized or eliminated better out of the body through the eliminative channels they should be. So it's not that big a deal to get off of it. Now if you've been on it for 20 years, you might be uh, six months or four months coming off of it, but you'd be surprised how fast you can come off of some of those things. Now, if it's a statin or if it's a blood pressure med or a, a metformin or, or glucophage for blood sugars, easy to stop those in a heartbeat. I was on a protocol with my primary care doctor, but then he left the practice and I haven't been able to find a doctor that will help me. I was on the hydrocortisone with the intentions of resting my adrenals. Are you a nurse? This is Terry. Because if you're a nurse, I mean, that would be the only reason. The only reason you would come up with that statement is either you're a nurse and you were taught wrong or you were told that by your medical doctor. Because that's what they think. They think that by taking a steroid, your adrenals will rest and rebuild themselves. If that isn't stupid and asinine, I, I can't tell you what isn't. Nobody believes that, and nobody's experienced that. So I don't know what the hell they're talking about. They're the biggest lie ever perpetrated out there. I, one medical doctor told that to one of my clients. Oh, your adrenals uh, will go to sleep for a little while, but they'll wake up stronger. Oh, really? Oh, really? And how many steroids does your adrenals produce? How many neurotransmitters does your adrenals produce? What about all those? while they're sleeping. I mean, th this is the ignorance of excellence. Unbelievable. Uh, adding, uh, adding in thyroid medication, <laughs> somebody really took your awareness down to a place that, uh, you know, of, of untruthfulness. Uh, hypothyroid and on T3, but can't seem to get my levels raised as it's stressing my adrenals. See, I think that you have a, you've been lied to and totally doing everything wrong, sweetheart. You want to get on some glandulars, but I have to say that it's possible you have a pituitary problem if you can't get the thyroid up, even with, uh, let's say, uh, levothyroxin or synthroid. But the wrong way, wrong way to do any of this. It doesn't rest, it doesn't make them better, that's all lies. And any medical doctor who believes that either is just being totally unaware and just left school and never got any more educated or he doesn't learn by you by watching his own clients or something because I see that every day I have clients every day tell me stuff like that every day I have people that's on hydrocortisone or some type of cortisol or something tell me or pregnisone or something like that and and, and all the symptoms that, that 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 occurs from that I mean this is a nightmare from hell and yet they, they someone's told you real bad, honey. 
I am starting the raw detox. Yeah, that's good. I need to know if I will be able to get off these safely. Oh, yeah, absolutely safely. Absolutely safely. And I've been on them for over four years now. And that's not long. So it's going to take you probably a couple months at the very mo at the very, very most. But same thing with thyroid. The thing is here, though, let's talk about this a minute. You have a pituitary and you have a thyroid and you have parathyroids here. The pituitary controls both of those. PTH, TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone and parathyroid stimulating hormone. So you've got, you've got a TSH from the pituitary turning on the thyroid. Now, if that TSH is low, they think you have hyperthyroidism. Because your thyroid is so active that your pituitary doesn't need to produce enough TSH to turn it on, so it's, it's low. So that means your thyroid is high. When your TSH is high, that means your thyroid is low and your pituitary is trying to overwork and compensate with more TSH. Half of that's wrong. Sometimes you have pituitary problems. They don't consider that much. I have a couple medical doctors out there considered that, and I thought, fantastic. But you've got to look to that, that pituitary. Because if you're working on the thyroid, the problems in the pituitary, you're going to have a half-ass experience there. And that's where you need your eyes. If you're a woman, you can look at your monthly cycles and get some idea. If they're irregular and you're short, you know you got pituitary problems. So it's just enough to say that use a glandular to enhance the function of the respective gland you wish to enhance. And if you're on a pharmaceutical for that, you can titrate or have your medical doctor help you. That, that'll be the good one. You should be able to go to your medical doctor and tell him, listen, I'm doing something else and I want you to help me get off of this. You put me on it. And that's the way it should be. But good luck. Good luck. But if you can do that, do that. But it's enough to say, this is easy to do. You've only been on it for four years. Go every other day. Put yourself on a, an Adrenal 400. I would. This is what I'd be doing for myself. That's the only advice I can give you is what I'd be doing for myself. You're a club member. We can talk differently. And not, all, and not this is not a club site. It is in the way that our club is trying to, to promote this site for you. But uh, the protection isn't as much. Uh, so, if you're having uh, T3 problems, I'd suggest that maybe your pituitary, what's your TSH? If your TSH is low, I'm suggest you might have a pituitary, especially if you're a little short, say under 5'5", five five, and if you're having menstruation problems. Uh, I am starting the raw detox and need to know, okay, da -da 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 -da, oh, four years. I have been told once on them that long, chances are I will never get off of them. I don't know where you live, but that's not true at all. And you haven't been on them that long, but that's not true at all. I have people on them for 20 years, guys. Easy. And we get them off all the time, all day long. Uh, now, somebody's lying to you. I know it's dangerous to come off of them fast. Not necessarily. Uh, but I'm uh, not sure how to come off of them. Every other day for a couple of weeks, every three days, if you don't see any symptoms, stop them. If you have a symptom, what symptom are you going to have when you have a low thyroid and you stop your thyroid? On? You feel a little tired and lethargic? Yes, so what? Right? But you're going to be on a glandular to pop that up. You'll never feel that. Because it's going to enhance the cells of the thyroid where your, where your pharmaceutical is actually weakening your thyroid. The reason you can't get off of them is when you take hydrocodone or you take T3, even T4 armor, you're going to weaken the respective tissue. They don't get better. They don't sleep and rest and wake up stronger. Uh-uh. They go down. They go down, down, down. Because you're supplying their work. You're, they don't have to work. They're not stupid. They don't, they don't continue to produce more steroids added to the steroid you're taking. That doesn't work that way. As, as the medical doctor said, they'll go to sleep. Meaning, you're shutting them down. How are you going to wake them up? They're suddenly just going to wake up after years on something that they shut down with? <laughs> Come on, these people can't even think outside of the box. Can one wean off hydrocodone? Oh, please. Absolutely, my dear. I have had biofeedback, acupuncture, and a hair analysis done, and despite my efforts with the hydrocortisone, I'll say I am still in severe adrenal fatigue. Because hydrocortisone doesn't rebuild adrenals. It makes them weaker. <laughs> 
You've been lied to, so you have a false sense of what you're doing, honey. You you don't even you know for some reason somebody's lied to you bad, and your thinking is off. You you think you're making it stronger by taking it, and you're making it weaker. There isn't anybody alive that thinks you're making it, and unless you're, uh, 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 I, I don't know. I, I won't go any further than that, other than to say that that's all wrong thing. You've been lied to big time, big time. Pete, we have. Half the people that come in here on all, more than half the people, more than half the people that come to us are on thyroids. More than half the people are on some type of steroid. I mean, this is just obvious. On most people come in here on at least half a dozen to a dozen pharmaceuticals. Don't be afraid of bad chemicals. There's only one one word for bad chemicals. Get rid of them. Get yourself healthy. Start working in the proper fields. You know. You want to be healthy and you want to have a happy life, then you have to let nature surround you and hug you, not a medical doctor. They don't know. They're part of the problem, not part of the solution. I say that, and if you need a good surgeon, I love a good surgeon. You need a good ER? Well, there's some out there. But it's enough to say, as a treatment-based modality, as a modality that understand man's problems and how to fix them, they don't understand nothing. So yeah, you're on your own. Not really. You have us. You have a whole site here. You have you have a, a Facebook site loaded with people. There are several Facebook sites. So you're not alone. No one has to be alone out there anymore. You have our team. If something happens to one of us, you have the whole team. See? If they jail me, kill me, who cares? You got the whole team there. See, that's the point. They can't stop us now. Matter of fact, they better be hiding from us because we're coming. You know, it's karma. It's, you know, some people have to be karma. Yeah. You guys are rallying me up today. <laughs> this is from Mary. And Mary is a member. I have a 12-year-old daughter that is having many health problems. I want you parents to know that if you have any children under 20, they're all going to have kidney and adrenals, inflammation, lymphatic problems, neurological weaknesses, and digestive problems. Take your pick on how many and of which ones. These are all what's coming down the pikes from all of us. Major kidney weakness, major adrenals, major lymphatic problems, major neurological problems. Look at, look at the seizures, the epilepsies. Of course, added with, added with the uh, vaccines, of course, that's a little help. But on top of the vaccine is the weaknesses. You know, you can take someone strong neurologically, go on a vaccine with imerosol, they're not going to go into a seizure. But you give a baby that's predisposed, and they don't know how to know this. You get a baby that's born with chronic adrenals and their myelin sheets are already chronic. They're going to go into a seizure with thimerosal. And you're just, you just, it, it, there's no, they, they almost treat like everybody's at the same level. Nobody's at the same level. That's the beauty of God is it's individual and everybody's at an entirely different level. Now, this lady has a 12-year-old daughter. Uh, she was born with hypothyroidism, and she has been okay. I never thought any of these symptoms, because they also could be related to the hypothyroidism, according to doctors. Mentally slower, she has a IEP in school. She has dandruff. Ooh, 12-year-old. Okay, now let's look at this case. This girl's got dandruff. She's got skin rashes. She's got asthma. She has chest pains. Uh oh, growth pains. There you go. Growth pains, according to docs. Okay, okay. All right. Now, constipation, UTIs, nosebleeds, and in the past year, she developed headaches, fever, and sores in the private area and in the mouth. After many doctors finally, they said it's <laughs> uh, Beckett's disease, and there is no cure. Ah! Oh. Somebody fill this up with strawberry daiquiri. Throw some organic strawberries in with it, would you? <laughs> God. <laughs> okay, sweetheart, let's take a look at this. And you, you guys on Facebook, let's look at this case. All right, so let's start off with this. You know, she was born with hypothyroidism. Again, you want to take a look and correlate this case to... Uh, Make sure, uh, make sure that, um, uh, that it's not pituitary. 
you really want to look at this pituitary. Now, this is a little 12 year old in big time trouble here. She's got a lot of problems that it got to be fixed now. She's only 12 years old. She's got dandruff. She's slow. So this is a, this is a case seriously developing some serious central nervous system problems. And with this case, you've got the potential of brain lesions. Here is an adrenal. So here's a case of an MS or something like that's coming in the future possible. So this is why you really want to deal with this 12-year-old now. And the first thing I do is sit her down and say, Honey, we're going to go on a Dr. Morris's tropical diet here for about uh, for about three or four months, if not a little longer. I wouldn't scare her too much, but, you know, two or three months. And uh, we're going to pay, pay like we're in the tropics. So we're going to eat fresh fruits and berries and melons. All right, because you want to regenerate her brain. But what's the other thing you want to do? You want to move her lymph system. You want to fix her kidneys. What's that dandruff doing up there? That means she's not moving her lymph system out of her brain. And that might also suggest, I don't know how much that affects with the uh, lymphatic system, but let me tell you, you don't want that backed up because that's hooked to the cerebral spinal fluid. So, this is, this is serious. This is a heavy lymphatic problem. But remember, at 12 years old, in today's world, in my opinion, you're going to have chronic adrenals and chronic kidneys. That, in turn, gives you a chronic lymph system. And that, in turn, gives you lymphomas at 18 years old. And that's not good. So, hypothyroidism. If it's a thyroid, at 12, we can use a little glandular or use thyroid herbs. Most of them are going to be the berries, of course. You can do that. Now, I would also do upper circuit brain and nerve in this child. Because we want to get her central nervous system turned on. All right? But... We know that it's being suppressed by acids because she has dandruff. And what else does she have up here? Uh, skin rashes. Lymphatic. Asthma. Tell me what asthma. Well, she could have some congestion in her lungs, but what else is asthma? Asthma is the first stage of COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So, what else do we have in this child that's weak to have asthma? The adrenal glands. Neurological weakness. This is the autonomic nervous system that controls breathing. So she's weak autonomically, which tells you that she has weak adrenal glands. Well, 12 years old, you're going to have chronic kidney and adrenal problems, I'm telling you. Watch your blood pressure because you're going to see real low blood pressure in this child. Now, uh, growth pains. All right, let's stop here. Wait a minute. This is a young girl. She's got growing pains. I've heard of that before. That's pain, right? And, and you're, it's just, just growing pains, right? But you've got a thyroid weakness. Now, when you have a thyroid weakness and you've got growing pains, what else do you have? I heard ya. you. Were right. You guys are too damn good. You have, she's got a parathyroid weakness, big time. Heck yes, and this is this is, you got to fix because at 12 years old she's having growing pains. She can have all kinds of problems. This isn't good. You got to fix this, mom. And this is parathyroid. That would take a glandular, in my opinion. You'd want to hit this with a glandular. I'd like to see this case myself. This is a this is a case you want to fix up here. She has constipation. Well, she's got a weak nervous system, and of course peristalsis is a neurological event, so obviously that when you have weak adrenals, it compromises your ability to have good peristalsis. What else could compromise peristalsis? How about interstitial lymphatic constipation in the bowel wall, uh -huh, where you get hardened from the lymph not moving, and lymph, of course, gets hard. Fibroids, lymph gets hard and hardens tissue because it's acidic. So then you have malabsorption, and you have a rigid bowel wall and a low neural function, so you have constipation big time. Now, UTIs, right there, draws your attention, right to her kidneys, right off. So, the eliminative organs of acids, her skin and her kidneys, are showing right off she's having problems. Eliminating. Well, there's a dandruff way up top, so she's not eliminating down below, she's oozing out the skin. Uh, good. Not good. So she's underdevelopmentally from, from, from all of this, and, this, and you, she can catch up. Now, if her height is low, now she should be menstruating here pretty soon, but if her height is low, then you can surmise what? Pituitary. Now, she's old enough to get a picture of her eyes, so let's get a picture of her eyes and let's look and see, because she's got multiple glands down. And this is just, this is guys, this is common young children today. This is common young people today. And it's sickening. I feel so sorry for them. 
nosebleeds. Well, that means she's full of mucus, and it's acidic, so it's, 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 it's back in that uh, capillary bed, but what else does she have that's also allowing for that to happen? Right, parathyroid, back to the parathyroid again, connective tissue weakness. So her connective tissue and her capillary walls are getting thin because acids are breaking her down. So she's bleeding. Uh, and in the past year, she developed headaches. Don't like those. Frontal stomach. Uh, fever. Well, her body's trying to eliminate her body. You want fever. Her body's trying to have healing crisis, trying to have a cold and flu-like symptom. Why? Cold and flu isn't a disease. It's, a, it's elimination. Your body tries to eliminate, and medical doctors stop it. I, 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 and sores in the private area, and in the, she's acidic all over. She probably has herpes, okay? So you just have to detoxify her. Even at her age, it, these young, young people are going to have to learn detoxification big time in their world. It's got to be a part of uh, co uh, uh, high school 101, grade school 101. Oh, my God. Now they gave her... Uh, uh, Whole cries? This medic I never heard of that. This medication makes her so sick. The only thing that that seems to help her is, is the steroids. You see, you get her in trouble, just like this last case we were reading. The reason she's having she's not having trouble with steroids. She's having trouble with her sewer system, and that sewer system is where all the acids are. That is where inflammation is born. Remember, inflammation is an immune response to proteins and acids. So now you've got a girl here full of acids, and their only their only thing is let's just throw let's throw so steroids in there. Well, let's don't listen to them, and let's throw our type of steroids in there: fruits, berries, melons, uh, all the herbs. All these are anti-inflammatories. But you've got to get her kidneys filtering, mom, or you're going to have a hell to pay with this this child. You've got to get her kidneys filtering or she's going to have a sick life. And that's no fun for her. That's not fair to her. Get her adrenals up. Get her nervous system up. You can get her brain. You can take your daughter, honey, and totally turn her into, a, into an advanced child. It's going to take you a little while to do that, probably a good year or so. But let your daughter review this because your daughter's headed for a life of hell mill and some serious hell mill at that. This is the, none of this is good at this early age. None of this is, and for them just to, oh. But I am looking for an alternative. She is only twelve. Please help. You bet you will help her. She's only twelve. I went to a health uh, food store and they mentioned to me the possibility of she having severe allergies. I called the primary doctor and I asked for an allergy test and she is allergic to nuts. She, but this is the lymph system again. And there'll be a time she can get allergic to everything. The little boy in the bubble syndrome, remember? Uh, yeah, she's allergic to everything. Oh, my God. No, that's her lymph system. That's her, been her lymph system all along. That's a, that's a system of allergies. That's a system of toxemia. That's the system, guys. Your blood can't run toxemia without... Let me see here. I don't know. I can't keep up with her health. Please help. She wants to be a veterinarian. Well, let's just get her to be a veterinarian, but she's going to have to be a holistic veterinarian because uh, they're needed bad out there. You could take dogs and other animals and regenerate them just like humans. You could take an old dog that's ready to die and totally give it life again. There's all kinds of neat things you can do out there in veterinary work. I mean, all kinds of neat things. I've worked on horses, llamas, cows. I've worked on snakes. I've worked on hamsters. I had a nurse detoxify her hamster. I had a guy detoxify his boa. I've had all kinds of things. I had a medical doctor ask me to help him detoxify his llamas because they were dying. I've had all kinds of things. Fun stuff. Horses, fun stuff. Yeah, I see here. Uh, this is from Ron. Hey, Ron. Hello, Dr. Morse. I have a very strange condition that started approximately four years ago. My upper thigh inseam started getting extremely hot and causes sweating in the groin that leads to shafting and constant and chronic pain and frustration. Well, you know where you get heat? Heat comes from acids, and this is, you know, you're feeling your lip bed a little bit here. So this heat is all acid, so you're building up in there some uh, some lymph up in there. And, of course, that's going to 
blow back to you know where <laughs> and give you some pain in the testicles and uh, you know it could in other places uh, heat makes my skin in that are hypersensitive and painful normal activities seem impossible most days yeah uh, yeah well you know the same thing you got to go up a little higher to your kidneys that's where all that heat is supposed to go out or the skin you know so you can do some cold compresses here of course cold packs but that's only a temporary fix of course that's only a treatment based fix help you to maybe walk a little better temporarily but you got to get your kidneys filtering some because you're going to lose your knees your hips your prostate can be next you know all these things like this so get your kidneys filtering it'll pull that get that lymph filtering and all that heat will come out of that leg like that and uh, you want to do that um let me see what else here. I seem to be somewhat affected by ambient temperature, although I am always... Well, the thing is, we all are in that sense. Pressures, temperatures, because it all deals... Remember, life's nothing but variances of pH. At, 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 at minor acids have some very beneficial effects in the human body. But as you start getting to both ends, the high base end or alkaline end, like alkalize, like lye and stuff, or the high acid end, they're going to they're gonna hurt you. They're going to hurt you. They're way on the end, so very few people bother them. You want middle base balance. That's why you, I still say why you see the planets doing this. I do. Let me see here. The hotter it is, the worse the problem. No kidding. Because at, and this, is, this is the same thing as chemotherapy. Same thing, same thing. Acid on top of acid just exacerbates the heat. Why would you give, under an inflammation condition, which we all know is acidic, why would you give more hotter acids? That's not going to get rid of inflammation. You might destroy the cells. Like in a cancer case like this girl, you could destroy the cells for a while, tear out the lymph nodes, destroy the cells, and say, she's cured. And that'd be the biggest lie ever perpetrated. Or one of them. Okay. My life has been so difficult and frustrating, and I need to help find help ASAP. The last year I have tried many ways supplements, nutrition, diet, and a long list of natural healing via alternative medicine. Isn't that sad? What's sad to me is that you couldn't find your remedy out of all these, these, these things that are in my field. So that it is definitely uh, unearthing to me. But. People don't realize true detoxification and that the fact that that is essential. Without detoxification, you ain't going nowhere. You're just throwing more goodies in on top of baddies. And it's just nothing ever gets well. And you see that in yourself, and I've seen it in thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people throughout the years, and even in myself. So, true wellness is a detoxification experience. But detoxification is much broader than what people think. It isn't just simply cleaning out the human body. Oh no, it's regenerating it too. This is a big deal, but it's essential. And it's just what nature does. Any other thing will not work. Man has to get away from this ridiculousness. Look at how scared people are of the Ebola. And not fix, focusing on the environment of people, internal environment of people, and what viruses really do that way. I feel like I have tried it all. You haven't tried my level because you wouldn't have it if you did, let me tell you. Because you've got to get in there and you've got to detoxify. Check your urine. Get a jar and pee in it, bro. Ron, take a look at it and see if you got sediment in it. No sediment, more heat. So that's your heat. So you want to get your kidneys filtering. And you want to get on a fruit, berry, and melon diet here for a few months and really start cleaning your body out. Get your bowels cleaned out. Get your kidneys filtering. And get your lymph moving. Now you're hydrating. Now the heat will come out and balance will be restored. A key essential. But you're feeling just what's going on there. Heat is acids. Acids are the byproducts of cellular metabolism, all, all metabolic processes and ionization and oxidation and every other friggin' process that's out there. Acids are a lot of the byproducts. Matter of fact, even in the crib cycle, take a look at these cycles and see what spins off on them. I am mostly raw the last two months, 95% will that in. Kick it on up another night. You want to get this done quick, Ron? Let's go. Get it up. Get it on up. You only have 5% more. But I stumble occasionally. Who cares about that? 
But get yourself up 100% raw. Get on 100% fruits, berries, and melons. Just do it for a few months. Get your kidneys filtering. Get on two kidney formulas, two lymphatic formulas. Get, if you can afford the 14-week protocol, go that way. Go, go some way. But you've got to go after your kidneys and get filtered. Because if you don't filter from your kidneys, I don't know how you're going to get that heat out of there. And the problem with that is it's telling you exactly what's going on. You're burning. And the burn can get pretty serious at times, especially if you feel it up in the gonadal region. <laughs> no. I've been doing a lot of green juices at a huge salad daily. Well, let's get a little higher on the fence. Let's get up into the fruits, berries, and melons. You want to move length? You want to get that heat out of there? You got to go a little higher on the totem pole, man. But uh, I still, okay, uh, I do get quite a bit of fruit, but uh, by thousands of it, not enough. Probably 60% veggie and 40% fruit. Let's do 80%, 90% fruit, berries, and melons, and maybe 10 to 15 to 20 vegetables. If you want to get this out of there, just saying. Uh, I've been doing a lot of green juices. Okay, da, 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 da. Please tell me what I need to do to get my health back so I can regain my place in my family and in my life. I have watched many of you uh, your YouTube videos and I don't have any knowledge of what herbs I need to know. Well, that's why I developed this. Six, it's a 14-week protocol and it's just, it's just what I would recommend in most cases. Uh, uh, and I, I geared it to some of the most difficult cases. So it's a good in-your-face protocol. If you want me to write it, I charge $150 to do it. And I want uh, eyes if you can get them to me, any blood work you can get to me, anything like that, any information you get helpful to me to write your protocols, send them in. Outside of that, you got a 14, no cost, you got a 14-week protocol. If not, the girls will even help you with something. Uh, uh, Drew will help you with something. I mean, uh, everybody will help you. You know, help you get your health back. Everyone that works here, except for shipping, pretty passionate about health. And even in shipping, we have some that are passionate about health. But in, in the clinic part here in the club, you everybody here is very passionate about helping others. Or you wouldn't be working for me. So, I have watched many, okay, so I am a male, 47 years old. I am uh, on no prescription meds at all. Blood work hasn't uh, dialed in what I need to focus on. Well, I'll give it to me or send it here or send it to Gen B or, or I'll tell you what. See, we, we, teach you, we teach you how to interpret blood work in level two. Uh, and so in level two, you're, you guys are going to get a, a fair amount of blood work. Marcy's uh, laid this out pretty nice for you. So you're going to get a good look at how you interpret blood work and what, what's really important to look at and what you can't do anything about anyway. I am a, okay, um, I need to focus on what system controls my problem, specifically lymphatic. That's your acid, that's your heat producing system. When you get people with lymphatic systems backed up, they get super hot. They burn inside. You can burn inside and be freezing. What condition is that? Hypothyroidism. You can be cold as ice and, and burning at the same time. See what I mean? So it's just learning about acids, learning about the two sides of chemistry, and that your body has two major fluids that kind of reflect those two sides of chemistry in their own way, even though the blood does transport acids, no question, but not to the level that the lymph does. You know, you have to be careful, and that's why the consumption of all these acid drinks like Coca-Cola and Dr. Pepper and the consumption of meats and things like this uh, compromising blood pH big time. And any time you compromise blood pH, you're going to lose something. Because the body's got to find goodies to batch that. Generally, it's calcium out of the walls or sodium. Or it's going gonna, it's gonna to pull something. And so, uh, it's just the way it is. So we just have to learn that we only hurt ourselves by eating bad. The problem is we're all educated wrong. So we have to, we're, we're having to re-educate ourselves in a world of ostriches. Now, hello, hello, this is Alex. I know you all can't give medical advice, but I heard in another video that Dr. Morris would consider creatine above 0.5 to be bad, but mine is 0.96. Ouch. Well, Alex, I would say 
0.5 to 0.6 top end. Most labs have 0.5 as low end. Matter of fact, I was looking at a lab on a creatine yesterday or, or Friday, and it was 0.7 to 1.35. If that, if that, if that uh, biochemist isn't screwed up in the head, I don't know what is. You're starting to push. You notice how they do these stats? I've been watching these stats for years, and they, 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 they like push them up there. And it's like because everybody's having trouble. So we just push the stats up. <laughs> no, you fix the people. You fix the people. You got a 1.96, Alex. You're right at one. No way. Uh, you're burning. Your kidneys have not filtering themselves now. A at least halfway. So you're burning back your kidneys from their own, not being able to filter their own waste. So you got a blowback in your kidneys on yourself and it's, it's going to hurt you. Uh, you, you know, as you pass one, then it's, it, you can get to two much faster and then three is just right around the corner and then you're going to dialysis. So you've just got to realize that you're having inflammation in the kidneys from the kidneys problems and you've got to fix the kidneys. So you want to get up on a fruit, berry, and melon diet. You want to get rid of all, trust me, all proteins right now and watch that creatine drop. No one use proteins and yeah, creatine will stay there like it's no tomorrow. So you really want to get off all proteins, get you on your fruits, berries, and melons. Okay, you can have a salad at night if this is all you're going after. But I'll get on two kidney formulas, one lymphatic formula, and uh, go after my adrenal glands on top and go after this because you're in trouble. You're at almost one, one, and that's, that's, that's trouble. And you know, that tells me you're not filtering, you're not even filtering your own kidneys, and now you're going to get yourself. By the way, uh, if you're not having lower back, I'd be amazed that you're going to have L4 and L5 problems. And then you, you know, it just goes on and on. Then there goes the knees. Oh, yeah, there goes the hip. And then, okay, there goes, you know what I'm saying? This is your lymph system. It's very serious, Alex. You need to fix this and make sure you do. And you need kidney, or I use kidney formulas with the herbs, and I use fruits, berries, and melons, and that's all you need. They love to feel good. All right, here's, are there only natural blue and brown eyes, or is it possible to have green eyes? Good question. There's only brown or blue. But if you have green eyes, take a look around your pupil, immediately around your pupil. You will see either orange or brown. I can't say which is worse. Orange is sulfur, and that's that's a, a bloat me, uh, irritating uh, acid uh, gas in the gut that always irritates the gut. Or brown is chronic gut. So either one, your your lymph system is 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 getting deeper involved, and your eyes are turning green toward hazel, and uh, mm -mm, not good. You want to turn around, and get your blue eyes again. Not difficult. But it takes them a little bit of work. You know. Easy on raw. I had a brain injury, and speaking neurologically, I am o overcharged, not the other way around. I find that greens and good fats bring those symptoms down, such as the spasms and such. Well, you know what? You're not giving me a lot here, man. Probably hooked to other things here. If you have a brain injury, you definitely want to be all on an alkaline diet. If raw is too aggressive for you, that that invokes questions of why. Uh, I would be on an upper circuit brain and nerve, uh, herbal wise, because all of those are healing to central nervous system damages and even to the the autonomic. To tell you the truth, I would definitely go and fix my adrenals and my kidneys and you know get my steroids up. If, if, if it makes you overcharged, then you're hypersensitive, then you're extremely acidic. The, inju the, uh, the acidosis from the injury has not healed itself. Well, that would make sense because you're not fil if you're not filtering from your lymph system, you wouldn't be able to heal an injury. And so you could be very volatile there, very sensitive. And so a lot of times that sensitivity uh, between acids and everything can create seizures or spasms. 
So you could take the antispasmodic is what I would do, and then I would take the upper circuit brain and nerve at the same time I'm going hellfire after my lymph system big time. Because that's how you have to remove any damaged tissue and, and any other uh, 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 chemistry that's hanging around in that area. Because that would be the only way that you would be hypersensitive to something like a, a fruit or something is that you're already, you know, volatile, you know, just sitting there like this. And so, but actually good fruit settles everything down. Fruits and berries and melons don't make people hyperactive. Not at all. When you have energy from these high levels, it's a dynamic energy that you can't describe. It comes from the cell. It comes from spirit. It comes from, I can't even describe it to you. But fruits don't make things hyperactive. They settle things down. Unless you're in an extremely hyperactive situation in that tissue, which means detox is the only way you're going to find remedy. And that's your lymph system. And that would make sense to me. And that would be the only thing. So you would take an antispasmodic. Now, the reason you have fats is because fats are anti-inflammatory. And that tells you immediately when you feel better on a high-fat diet that this is all acidosis and inflammation. Even from the trauma itself, you just weren't able to fix it. And when you're not able to fix an injury or trauma, that means you have you're not, your lymph system's backed up and you're not filtering and therefore you can't, your body can't clean. Your blood can't clean and, and, and heal and, and feed and everything by itself. It's impossible. It tries sometimes, but the big thing, whatever you do and however you do this, you have to detox for green drinks first, do that then. But do the, the, the parsley and the dandelion greens and things like this. You want to, uh, to do the green drink, but eventually you want to move to your fruits and the berries, man, if it's a brain injury particularly, because this is the only food that is for brain tissue, brain, brain neurons, and autonomic neurons is fruits, berries, and at least fruits and berries. I don't know about melons. All right, so uh, you want to fix that. And I, you also could do some cold compresses over that, too, to help you out a little bit and while you're detoxifying and see if you can help uh, reduce that uh, inflammation or acidosis. Uh, bladder prolapse, <coughs> uretin prolapse, and extreme brain fog. Holy crap, Jessica. Crap. Hi, Dr. Morris. Hi, Jessica. I appreciate you taking this time out of your busy day to address me. I'd be happy to, honey. That's why I'm doing. I'd be more than happy to help you. You're absolutely amazing. Oh, thanks, sweetie. I'm uh, forever grateful and thankful to you. What you are doing for this. Oh, thanks, sweetie. Every day I'm spreading your message. Oh, that's good. Planting the seed. And that's how you grow, too. You know, we grow by giving. And because by giving, we get, don't we? It's just, it's just a beautiful thing. And uh, uh, good to do. Let's see. Uh, as for me, I'm a 26-year-old young or single mom, oh, single mom at 26, who was recently diagnosed with a bladder prolapse grade 3. Uh, luckily, it's only the size of a marble right now. Oh, good. But it's protruding out of the uh, female area. Okay, now, definitely want to get a hold of this because you don't want all that to come out, you know. Uh, parathyroid, parathyroid, parathyroid. And this is probably where I would probably break through a green drink route first. Uh, your fruits are very aggressive at detoxifying, and sometimes when you have a weakness, it affects that weakness boldly. So I would probably do the green drinks and with some fruit, 50-50. And uh, the green drinks, I'd do the parsley, the dandelions, the beets, the whatever you like in there, cucumbers, celery, whatever you like in there. But I would also take parathyroid, for me, I'd take the parathyroid glandular and I would do one three times a day and I'd do two bottles to start. At the same time, I'd either do a, a bones formula, uh, my bones formula, or I'd be doing my superfood number two, which is extremely high in calcium. And, and iodine to help the kick. So those is the way you want to string at the same time. You want to check your kidney filtration. You got to fix that because it, the acids is why you lose the calcium in the first place. And even though there might be, there's a parathyroid obviously involved here where you can't rebuild when you lose calcium, it's acids that make you lose the calcium, which then compromises structure, connective tissue in this case. So you would definitely want to hit the parathyroid gland. You definitely want to use a uh, like the superfood blend number two or the bones formula. I'd probably up for the superfood blends number two because you can use that right along and it's just you know hog hog nutritionally. 
but this will help strengthen that. At the same time, I'd probably do uh, a lot more laying down and relaxing while I'm going through this. Um, I'm not so sure that I might even try to do some minor douching vaginally with the Hill All Tea just to, just to help some inspire some cleansing of the mucosa and maybe some elimination there of some acids. Um, and that's how I go down this road, for sure. And definitely get your adrenals up, get your, your, um, your kidneys filtering and get all these acids out of these, these tissues. But at the same time, to strengthen those tissues, you need that parathyroid going. So that'd be the where I would be going. Luckily, it's only the size of, okay, uh, I also have a, a grade one uretin uh, prolapse as well. My cervix drops very low to the opening. See, and that's what I'm saying. You need to strengthen connective tissue and strengthen your whole body. I don't know if you have any depression or did you have postpartum depression with your child, but that would fit totally in with the parathyroid weakness, you know. But that's, you'd have to go that way to strengthen this up. And you want to want, I wouldn't be doing any strenuous exercises. I wouldn't be doing a lot of pressure and up and down and stuff like that. You want to relax and let that tissue pull in and heal and you'll be in good shape. Hernias are difficult when they get too big because people are active and it, you have to hold that in, allow that tissue to heal. So sometimes hernias are hard. Uh, but it sounds like this one. Uh, but take it easy, you know. Take the next few months and uh, strengthen and clean, strengthen and clean and relax. Get your feet up, you know, lay down more, and just let that tissue have a break from stress, and uh, that'll help you. I think I'm beginning to have, if not already, have a, uh, yeah, retro, yeah, I have a history of HPV. Well, it is only the length is why you have that history, and that's why I say douching will help you to clean that out of there and strengthen those walls. At the same time, you're going in and strengthening through the system. See what I'm saying? So all these things are all very helpful. She's had a history of ovarian cysts. Of course, you're going right back to the th uh, kidneys again. So you got to fix these things. you got to fix why you're having extreme acidosis in these tissues and losing calcium. We know why you're not putting it back. We know the parathyroid issues here. Now, what you might want to also look at is how tall are you? When did you start menstruating? Is your menses on time? Because... You want to see if your pituitary is suppressing your parathyroid, or is it just a parathyroid weakness? If I see a pituitary, what I do is I give a pituitary, one bottle of pituitary, 1 a.m., 1 p.m., and then I do a parathyroid with it, of one three times a day, two bottles, and a bones or a, a, a superfood blend with it. Uh, and and that, that's how I go after this. My back pain has always been since I started getting my period at 17. So she was a late starter, very late, 17, pituitary. So you might want to think about using one bottle of pituitary. See if you're below 5'5 five five, but in your monthly cycle, but you started late, which would be pituitary. Maybe due to my tilted uterus, yeah, I bet it's more to your pituitary. It's then suppressing your parathyroid, that then... Uh, as as your kidneys are not filtering, as acids are building, you're losing calcium to that. You're getting weaknesses in connective tissue, and this is all developing on you. So you can turn all that around. My mother and grandmother both got their period at 18. What is this tied to? Pituitary. And you might want to do the female reproductive formula for about two or three bottles just to strengthen the ovaries and uterus themselves that way too. A lot of great female herbs. And you might want to do this now because we're uh, wildcrafting a lot of the herbs out of existence. And so uh, a lot of us herbalists are drawing a line on how much we can use and, and take an herb to... We don't want to take an herb out of existence. And... Um, there's some good female herbs now that are, are on the uh, endangered species, especially false unicorn. And that's, that's a fantastic herb. Uh, not to mention, I, have, I ha only have two to three periods a year. Pituitary. Makes total sense now. So you, you, I would do that, pituitary, bot, one bottle, one and one. Then I would go, after I'm done with the pituitary and, and that, I'd do on the female reproductive. At the same time, I'm going after your kidneys. I'm going after your adrenal. I'm going after your lymph system. 
At the same time, I'm going to clean your bowels up. At the same time. Because if you sit there and you do one thing at a time, one thing at a time, excuse me, it can be a hell of a long time till you get remedy. I don't work that way. I pull out all the stops. Go for it. Hit your body with everything. And your body just wakes right up. I mean, I don't overdo it, but I'm just saying. You sit here and play with one herb now and one herb there and one herb there. You're not going to go anywhere with that. This is, you want everything working together, especially when you have this kind of problem, because this leads to postpartum depression. And the question then is, here's a grandmother, here's a mother, here, uh, and here's you, but what about the other one? Aren't you a 26-year-old single mother? So, you've got a little baby here. Uh, can't be that old if you're 26 uh, that you've got to deal with. And they're genetics, so I want you to be watching that because this growing pains, all these sort of things, this is parathyroid. So watch this real close because the chances are with this much genetic in your history that your baby also is in this line. And that isn't good. And it could stunt the growth of the baby right off in the height and everywhere else. So uh, that might be something you want to talk with one of the ladies, Jennifer or one of them back with and get your, your young child. I don't know how old, but maybe thinking about something for them. Even if it was just an endocrine gland formula while they're they're growing. For sure you want them, they're going to be older than one, so you want them on fruits and berries and melons. You want to do the same thing to your children you do to yourself. They're just little use. Oh, let me see here. <laughs> Three periods a year. Well, I start, and a medical doctor couldn't have told you that? You know, that amazes me. A medical doctor doesn't know why that is? I don't know. That's pretty scary. When a YouTuber can tell you what that is, and a medical doctor can't, that means you guys are pretty damn good. <laughs> yes, I'm feeling a little frisky nowadays. I only got one week to class. It's always nerve-wracking to me. Let me see what else here. Uh, she has extreme brain fog, too. Well, first of all, you want to get all the fungus out of you. Make sure it's not a fungal fog. And then you want to get upper circuit brain and nerve. You really want to get the lymph moving. Because if you're backed up like all this, you're backed up in the head. Your pituitary's down. That means probably your hypothalamus is down. Things are reactive slow. Could be serotones down. Who knows? So you just get up and turn on. Turn on. Use herbs and diet to turn on. Herbs and foods. Herbs and foods to turn on. That's the tools God gave us. Those are the tools that are safe. And those are the tools you can use and have fun. Glanulars are fairly safe. Uh, let me see here. Uh, I started fasting on grapes for seven days and my allergies, insomnia, and depression had all gone away. And guess what? I got my period. Isn't that interesting? Just on a little few days of grapes. Isn't that beautiful? I love God. I mean, and nature. Look at that. Is that not cool? Now listen. Insomnia and depression... You're giving, us a, uh, you're giving us a whole road of clues, sweetheart. Depression, parathyroid, so insomnia, pineal. So your whole head is full lymphatically. You're inflamed all over. you got to start detoxing big time. Get yourself straightened around here, okay? So much that she has so much brain fog that in the middle of a conversation, can we forget what was being said and then have to make something up to not look like I'm an idiot? I do that once in a while myself. Now, what was that I was saying? I am willing to do anything and everything you suggest. Can you please tell me which herbal formulas of yours I should take and how much, as well as what plant proteins do I need? Uh, there's that protein again. Bite your tongue, Jessica. Uh, as well as what uh, do I need? I'd like to have more children, but the doc, of course, says a hysterectomy will be in my future. Not if you fix it right, and you want to fix it before you have any more kids, because you need to look at your child, because you've got too much of a history here going back into the parents and grandparents, and this is, this is a serious history problem. When you have a pituitary down like that, anything and everything can happen. That's not good. It's a main gland there. Then your th parathyroid is obviously down. That's not good. Depression and all this stuff, you got to fix this stuff, sweetheart. And you'll be good, and everything is great. And uh, 
Who cares if you sound like an idiot? You know what? You, people, you just can't care what other people think. Who cares? As long as you live a life of truth, righteousness, and love, and you give, and, and you're helping people, who cares? You have the right to do anything you want. God put us all here to have fun. We elected governments. We started the problem. You know, our spiritual advisors, the problem with that, we have religious advisors. Spiritual advisors are a little different because they don't, they don't say, well, we need to go to war. You're an infidel. We need to go to war with you. That's not a spiritual advisor. That's a religious advisor. And there's a big difference between religions, man-made, and spirituality, which is God awareness. You don't go killing people with spirituality. But religious thought, Christians went through their inquisitions and their head cutting off they went through their time doing it. Now Islam's doing it. Well, at least the radical side seems to be an awful lot of that. But you see, it's a, it's a thing. This is why we must uplift this planet. It's enough. You don't have to go there. Because it's hell to pay if you don't. I mean, when God shakes the worlds, yeah, that's a... I don't know. All right, that's enough. Please help me. I will do, uh, listen. Don't worry about any of that. What's this? I also I took my daughter to see an iridologist. Ooh, do you have any? Uh, did you take pictures? Do you have pictures? That was doing free exams for the public, and she said my daughter has an overload of radiation. So you took your daughter to an iridologist, and the iridologist looked at her eyes and said she had an overload of radiation. That's a, that's a German iridologist. What can I do for her as well? Thank you so much. Ah, oh, you're welcome, Jessica. I love you too, honey. Well, listen, first of all, <laughs> I wouldn't believe a thing that iridologist says. Uh, I'm telling you, when you start saying, when you start looking at someone's eyes saying you have an overload of radiation, that's problematic to me. That's real problematic. Uh, and I'm sure your daughter has a lot more serious problems than with a history like yours. You should have told that iridologist about your history. If, if that had any brains at all, they would have known to look in the uh, pituitary area and other areas. But again, I don't know. There's iridologists out there that are weird, weird beings. Oh, look, you took a trip uh, a couple weeks ago. I see it in your eyes. There's always people out there that are ruined sciences. That's why people don't have much faith in some things, is because it is sees out there. <laughs> Stage four kidney cancer. Holy crap. Whoa, 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 whoa. Nicole. Nicole? My uncle, oh, my uncle was recently diagnosed with stage four kidney cancer and 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 just found out what that his medication has a two thousand dollar copay. <laughs> Holy crap. Isn't that something? Can you provide any advice as how we can help him naturally? He has tons of faith and spends most of his time encouraging us. I just want to help him. Well, I really look forward. Well, Nicole, let him view this video. First of all, don't, you know, man, uh, um, Uncle, I don't know what your name is, but you don't have to spend that kind of money. If you're in kidney cancer and failure, there's only one way out of that. So you want to get immediately, immediately on 100% raw foods, immediately. Nothing cooked, nothing, not at stage four, nothing cooked. Also, I personally recommend a high fruit, berry, and melon diet. Forget the vegetables. You're too advanced. Forget the vegetables, right? This is the fastest way to get the kidneys back in shape. Second of all, I would do kidney number one capsule, kidney number two tincture. Then I would do endocrine gland, and I would do uh, the adrenal tincture. At the same time, I'm doing stomach and bowel. I'm going uh, GI broom. I'm going after your gut. I'm going after your GI tract. I'm going after your filtration of the kidneys because if you don't filter the kidneys themselves at least, and that's what you're not doing. You lost filtration even of your kidneys. Uh, be curious to what your creatinine is and see how far up that scale you are. But there's only one way to get out of cancer, uh, a diagnosis of cancer, and that's to understand that that is not a, that cancer doesn't exist. It is acids that are breaking down your kidneys that exist, and you've got to get these acids out of there. That's reality. And reality is, even the cells of the kidneys produce acid waste. And if the kidneys can't filter these wastes out of themselves, this is where they go wrong. That's when you see the creatinine levels go up. Till then, you can just lose filtration, fill it in your joints and in your muscles and everywhere else, and get lymphomas and tumors, you know, everywhere else. 
But when the kidneys start to go, the kidneys have lost even their own filtration. So you want to fix this. Stage four, uncle, get right on this, and you you you, you can survive this. You can get those kidneys rebuilt and get get yourself back in uh, life like you should. But you got to get 100% raw. I would say 100% fruits, berries, and melons. They're the easiest, the most gentle, and cleansing on the kidneys as well. And I would get on some herbs for the kidneys and the lymph system. Because, of course, the lymph, you know what's funny? All the lymphatic herbs are the cancer herbs. Huh. Now, nah. Keep in mind that when I'm using the word, I'm only reflecting what medical doctors are throwing out to the public in terms of terminology, when in reality, there's no such thing. It's a word meaning damage of a cell by acids, the mutation of a cell. Funny word for that, isn't it? Well, what's doing that? You know, the trouble with with this whole concept of diseases is that it takes your power away and gives it to them. And of course, they don't know what to do with it, so they make idiots things like, oh, it's your autoimmune problem. Uh, yeah, it's it's your age. It's it, it's just it's it, it, everybody has that problem, all that kind of crap. Yep, I'm gonna have to get going here in a little bit. I have interstitial cystitis, trying to heal myself because I have terrible pain. Uh, this is Ruby, Ruby. I've talked about this a great, great deal on these videos. So you know your bladder, hook to your kidneys, hook to your lymph system. This is all your lymph system in the bladder itself. We've been. This site is nothing about interstitial acidosis. Just location, location, location. When it's the, uh, the bladder, it's called cystitis. But interstitial simply means that that sewer system around the cells. It's a fluid that flows around your cells. Well, your cells dump their waste in this fluid. And if this fluid doesn't care, filter these wastes through the lymph system and through the lymph nodes, then you have a retention. You have a blockage in the kidneys, and of course you have a blowback on that. And now even your bladder can't filter itself. So you're burning your bladder up. And the only way to help that is get yourself on a raw food diet. Now, the problem is it's going to be a little painful. So, again, we talk about marshmallow tea. I I want to go on and read a couple more, but I'll say this, Ruby. I've done a lot of videos on interstitial cystitis. Review them, and they're not that far back because a ton of people are being diagnosed with this now. And it's just that we're... It's all interstitial, guys. So, you, you really want to uh, get a hold of this. I would get on that 14-week program, don't even play games with this, because it'll just burn up your bladder. And then you'll start peeing pieces of your bladder out. So you really want to, you know, get on an herbal program at the same time, change your diet to fruits, berries, and melons. I'd stay away from the acid fruits. I'd go sub-acid and sweet. I'd be using hill all tea or some type of tea. I have a stomach tea, but a, a hill all tea, some tea to help with the bladder. Uh, or slippery elm tea, marshmallow tea, mullein tea. They're all anti-inflammatories. You know, but this is interstitial. So this isn't in the chamber. This is in the wall. This is where your cells are. So this is hooked to the whole of the lymph nodes and the urine itself. So... This is lip node city. This is all kidneys, too. This goes right back what's on top of the uh, bladder. So you really have to go after this. So I'm going to, I want to let you go and review these other videos because uh, that's as much as I can tell you right now. i got so much to go over. But i got plenty of information on this, and you can get out of that. So we, you know, that no one has to live with interstitial anything. And it isn't fun. The urgency, and it's just... It, it, None of this is fun in the urinary tract at all, pain-wise and everything else. So be real cautious. You you don't want to put any protein down your body whatsoever. I'll tell you what, try this. Try a week, just fruits, berries, and melons, sub-acid and sweet, uh, maybe some salads and vegetables, maybe some green drinks, no citruses, no acids, no tomatoes, nothing that's acidic, and then go have you some protein. Let's go out and have you a piece of fish. Mmm. Put some potatoes with it if you want. And then you tell me, write me back and tell me what your experience was. You won't even have to write me back because I'll pre-tell you what your experience will be. So go for it, sweetheart. Get that out of you, Ruby, because you've got to get your, your kidneys filtering. So you got to use kidney formulas. you got to go after your adrenal gland. You want to clean up your bowels. There's a, there's a blowback there. So you want to clean everything. You clean your body out. You want to detoxify yourself, Ruby. You'd be done with that forever. If not, good. I mean, uh, 
Not good. And the antibiotic use, holy, that's enough to destroy a person right there on this stuff. Just kill all your lymph node uh, bacterium. That's, that's not good. But uh, very doable, very, very doable to get out of this problem. But it does take some work, and there are going to be some ups and downs uh, in, in getting these acids out. It's not a pain-free operation. But you can definitely pull all that out of there, get that pain out of there, cut it way down, get rid of it completely, and rebuild. All right, now, this, one, this woman is not even... Oh, uh, please submit to YouTube. All right. Oh, this is Bridget. Hey, Bridget. I have an ongoing unstabilized hypothyroid. If something is unstabilized in the body, you know, where you're moving between hyper or hypo, or brady tacky, either way, when you're seeing your stats fluctuating, then you know it's, it's inflammation. And when you, when, when you, when you can use that word and, and, and convert it to the appropriate word acidosis, then you know what is at the core of instability of the human body is an unstable chemistry. And when you have an unstable chemistry, you have an unstable diet. And when you have an unstable diet, your health is going to go to, to hell in a handbasket. And we are led to believe that dead animal tissue is healthy for you. Milks that have been, any milk, especially of a ton and a half beast, and especially if you ought to pasteurize it next to plastic, it's good for you. I mean, when you buy into this kind of crap thinking, and the problem is we haven't even thought about health until we started feeling bad. And then we started realizing, wait a minute, could it be what we're eating? Well, those spiritual people realize that. And then, of course, as time went on, people started experimenting and changing and getting back to their innate tropical essence. Now, let's see what uh, what Bridget wants here. Uh, okay, unstabilized hypothyroid. Hashimoto situation. Well, it doesn't matter about the... Uh, 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 Hashimoto's diagnosis and the uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, antigens and, and antibodies and stuff like that. I wouldn't even worry about the antibodies because it's just not going to make any big deal because you're going to detoxify because this is about acidosis and the, and the, and the hit the cells get from the acids. That's why the antibodies. So you just, you, it's just your body trying to stay stable as much as possible. And instability is always an acid condition. Now, it can be an uh, 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 alkalosis, but for 99% for of the people, we're into acidosis here. And you probably have a thyroid full of mucus or, or pituitary. And you could have a lot of sinus congestion and your pituitary is kind of going up and down, up and down. Of course, TSH is going to follow that, uh, uh, PTH, all of that. I take thyroxin. There you go. Uh, hard to use. That's why I would probably... If you're going from hyper to hypo, I wouldn't take anything. If you're always hypo, then I would take a glandular. And I would take a glandular of 150 milligrams, and I would do one three times a day for about one to two bottles. But if you're swinging where you have tendencies of hyper, you don't want to take anything for your thyroid because you'll never stabilize it. You go up and down and up and down and up and down. You don't want to do that. You want to detoxify. Because anytime you have a, any hyperactivity of any tissue, there's nothing you want to give for that tissue. Because you'll send it into super hyper tissue. No, -uh. The only remedy in hyperactivity is simply detoxify. You don't cut half the thyroid out or all of it out. You simply detoxify it. Uh, consigned for life, I have been told. Oh, quit it. Yeah, you know better. Don't buy into that, Bridget. You know better. Nothing's for life. That's stupid. That, that's only medical thinking. You can rebuild anything. I have been told. I am always hopeful for a change of outcome. And let me give you all the hope in the world. Easy do. But, like I said, make, I gotta know more than just this. Uh, hyper hypo. When you get cases like this, uh, guys on Facebook, and remember, Hyperactivity means detoxification. You give a thyroid. I've done that. I mean, that's how you learn. 
what I'm trying to do is save you guys some real big learning curves in this field. And if I can do that, please take advantage of that, and you'll move right onto the head of the line. And that's the whole idea. And I can teach you how to take a shortcut to God consciousness, too. You know, there's always a shortcut. All right. Oh, here's another one. This is from Alex. I just had an Alex. Uh, I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan of yours, Alex. Thanks for writing me. Been watching as many of your videos lately as I can. Also trying to spread the knowledge. Oh, that's what I'm interested in. Spread that knowledge. Because this suffering, you see just by hearing what people are suffering from. And look how young. 15 today. 17. 18. My God, you guys. You will always have our help. I am now 28 years old. So my problems that I've been experiencing over the last five years, nasal polyps, there you go. Well, you're not a dairy drinker, right? Ice cream, milk, uh, yogurts, kefirs. Uh, I cannot smell asthma and balding. Ow! Oh, Ow, oh, Alex! Well, is your balding tied to your nasal polyps? And is your nasal polyps tied to mucus? And is mucus... There you go. And the mucus tied to the mucosa. Is the mucosa tied to the lymph system? Is the lymph system your protective system, your immune system? Yes. So you see what's up? Asthma. Remember, the beginning of the COPD chain is coming from weak adrenals, low neurotransmitters, and that's another thing. It isn't just the lungs. It is the nervous system with that. So you want to work on that. You want to go everything. When, you're, when you have any condition whatsoever... Don't the first thing you want to think about is, am I having proper elimination of my waste? And am I consuming the proper foods for health and vitality? Those are the two central core questions that one needs to ask themselves. Then you can go into, am I digesting and I'm, I'm, I'm absorbing, am I utilizing the adrenals, remember? Adrenal steroids for utilization of minerals. And am I eliminating the byproducts of all these processes of the human body? Simple four, but on top of those four, you always have to ask yourself, am I consuming the proper food for my species, and am I eliminating the waste from all the processes that deal with this food? And the answer to all those questions, to those two basic questions, has been a flatly resounding no in the human species for generations. You've got your people out there that do this, and you have your islanders, but as a, as a broad look worldwide... So worldwide, everybody's in trouble. Uh, I don't like balding. I don't like asthma. I don't like anything. You can't smell. I'll tell you what. You'll get your old factories back, but you got to get you got to get this cleaned out. You got to dump your sinuses. Well, to dump your sinuses, you have to clean what your head's sitting on, and your head's sitting on your GI tract. So you got to clean your GI tract, and then you got two winged uh, eliminative organs called kidneys, and they need to filter. So you've got to get your kidneys filtering, you've got to get your bowels cleaned up, break these sinuses loose, start your hydration, and get all this mucus out. Everything will start opening up, your polyps will come out, your sense of smell will come back, your hair will start growing back. It's essential that you do these things, but it's tied right down to kidneys and adrenals, and of course, that's tied to asthma. I have learned from you that the polyps and the asthma are probably due to the lymphatic system and being... I should read on, right? <laughs> the system being severely clogged up, and I'm working hard to clean that up. I've been transforming to 100% raw, good man, living uh, living foods diet over the past year. I'm finally getting the uh, hang of it. Good job, man. Good job. I'm on day 13 of 100% raw detox right now. Yeah! At 13 is a lucky number. Good job. I'm spitting up a lot of mucus every day, and that's just what you need to do. You keep moving it out, moving it out, and pretty soon you'll start smelling it. You'll be surprised and if you might find out what I found out. And that is, I was smelling by memory. And when I started smelling again, I, I had a smile on my face from ear to ear. I almost went into nirvana because it's like, I can smell. I didn't realize I had lost that sense from all the milk drinking growing up. I didn't realize it. 
Ears, nose, and throat, guys. I've always said women have lost their sense of smell. A lot of women serve spoiled meat to their families, not realizing because they can't smell it. At least that's what an article by the ears, nose, and throat guy said. Oh, I spitting a good mucus. I'm guessing that's just my detox going on and on and on. You want mucus from the nose, mucus from the mouth, mucus from the ears, and mucus from the butt, mucus from the urine, and women, mucus from the vaginal area. Next week, I'm doing like you said and just eating grapes. Yeah! This guy's kicking butt, guys. I still do a lot of green juices while I replace with more fruit. Keep going and the more mucus will flow, man. The asthma symptoms always uh, lessen significantly when I eat right, of course. But uh, brain and nerve, you might want to try the brain and nerve and definitely want an adrenal kidney formula. Definitely want to go after those areas. Those are your blockages. And, of course, your adrenals are also your neurological kick of your autonomic. I understand that it will take time to clear all this up, but you're doing good. Just hang in there. It'll clear faster than you think. Enjoy what you're doing. If you're feeling better, 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 and uh, enjoy the ride. With the nasal polyp shrink and go away? Absolutely. I don't want to have to get them surgically removed. No kidding. Oh, absolutely. Just like any tumor, any uh, uh, cyst. I'm willing to go to the distance with this healthy lifestyle. Can I regrow my hair? Absolutely. And you want to make sure you do. That's all I can tell you. No hair, Alzheimer's, dementia in the future. I've been balding since I was about 22. Oh, well, he's 28. Oh, you got time. Put it back on there, man. I want to get my health and my hair back and show people how powerful this raw diet is. And Alex, be happy to help you. Get in there and get going on this. And you'll be good. You're doing good as it is. Well, it's Sunday at about 5.30. And we've done about two and a half hours here. I've got two more, a little over two more waiting. Uh, see, I've got two hours, two hours, two and a half hours. I've got you right here about seven hours of videos. Sorry I had to do it that way. In the future, we'll try to cut them down, but I've got school. I, I've been putting together all the paper for that. Did a lot of work. So, I hope it's not too overwhelming. But I apologize for that. But it's the only way I can get this all this information I need to you guys. And I'm still sitting on a stack of papers here. And I, I'm just doing my very best, guys. So I appreciate it. I love you all. And I think you all are doing incredibly beautiful. So may the blessings be to each and every one of you. Don't stop. Hook to your spirituality. Start being happy with life. And happy with life means you're feeling good. Hard to feel good when you're in pain. And pain is always an acid experience. Acids are always of the lymphatic system. And the lymphatic system has the kidneys and skin tied to it. That's why you see so many problems with kidneys and skin problems all over the place. Lower back, you just see all these problems. Adrenals all over the place. And so when you start to get that and understand the system, it all just falls into place for you. And you start to realize why man suffers and, and, and how to fix it. And you don't live in a cold world of darkness where there's nothing you can do and you were told your glands are shut down forever or this is that and all your glands are sleeping. They'll come back. All the crap and lies that are out there. You guys will gain your power and your strength and your awareness back. And a lot of you are already. I love it. And uh, thanks for visiting. Love you guys. See ya at class. Well, I'll probably do another video or two first.